Welcome to the audio version of our newest report. We hope you enjoy it. Key Takeaways In December 2023, we observed an intrusion where the first indication was the execution of a cobalt strike beacon and culminated in the deployment of black suit ransomware. The threat actor leveraged various tools, including Sharphound, Rubius, SystemBC, GetDataInfo.ps1, Cobalt Strike, and AD Find, along with built in system tools. Command and control traffic was proxied through Cloudflare to conceal their Cobalt Strike server. Fifteen days after initial access, BlackSuit ransomware was deployed by copying files over SMB to admin shares and executing them through RDP sessions. Three rules were added to our private rule set related to this case. The DFIR report services. Private threat briefs. Over 20 private DFIR reports annually. Threat feed. Focuses on tracking command and control frameworks like Cobalt Strike, Metasploit, Sliver, etc. All Intel. Includes everything from private threat briefs and threat feed, plus private events, open directory reports, long-term tracking, data clustering, and other curated intel. Private Sigma rule set features 100 plus Sigma rules derived from 40 plus cases mapped to MITRE attack with test examples. DFIR Labs offers cloud-based hands-on learning experiences using real data from real intrusions. Interactive labs are available with different difficulty levels and can be accessed on demand, accommodating various learning speeds. Contact us today for pricing or a demo. Case Summary The intrusion began in December 2023, with the initial sign being the execution of an unusually large-sized cobalt strike beacon. After the beacon's execution, there was no immediate follow-up activity. The initial access delivery method for the intrusion remains unclear, as there was no evidence available. The cobalt strike C2 traffic beacon to IP addresses managed by Cloudflare, which acted as proxy server between the victim network and their team server. Approximately six hours after the initial execution, the threat actor used Windows utilities, such as System Info and NL Test, to perform enumeration on the system and environment. After, they conducted AS rep roasting and Kerber roasting attacks against two of the domain controllers, utilizing Rubius, which was executed in memory via Cobalt Strike. Following this, the threat actor ran Sharphound in memory through the Cobalt Strike beacon and saved the output to disk. Around 10 minutes after the initial discovery, the threat actor carried out their first lateral movement. They transferred a cobalt strike beacon via SMB and executed it through a service to compromise another workstation. On that workstation, they accessed LSS to obtain credentials from memory. Throughout the second day of the intrusion, the threat actor deployed multiple cobalt strike beacons on workstations and servers and also used RDP for further lateral movement. The threat actors deployed multiple system BC executables on one of the file servers. The second executable established persistence through a registry run key and opened a new command and control channel. After a busy second day of activity, the intrusion went silent. On the seventh day, the Cobalt Strike command and control domain stopped using Cloudflare and switched to an Amazon AWS IP address for the remainder of the intrusion. On the eighth day, the threat actors deployed a new PowerShell Cobalt Strike beacon on a domain controller, this time pointing to a separate command and control server. After two days of inactivity, the intrusion resumed with more Cobalt Strike beacons being distributed, along with several RDP logins. More discovery activity was noticed when Sharphound was executed again. The threat actor attempted multiple times to run AD find but failed in each instance. Five days later, the threat actor returned to finish their mission. This time, AD find was executed successfully, followed by the execution of the PowerShell script getDataInfo.ps1. The final step was the deployment of the Black Suit ransomware binary, CoolBuE-Exe, which was distributed via SMB to remote systems through the C$ share. The attacker then manually connected to these systems, using RDP to execute the ransomware. Upon execution, the ransomware used VSSAdmin to delete shadow copies before encrypting the hosts. The time to ransomware, TTR, was just under 328 hours, spanning 15 calendar days, with host files being encrypted and the black suit ransom note left on desktops and folders across the systems. 
The next section of the report is not attainable in an audio format. Therefore, we recommend visiting the site on a computer when you have time. A link to the full report is in the description. Thank you for listening.